best wishes and uh, would normally be here tonight and chairing this meeting but is, is unable to. Uh, but we're delighted, of course, to, to move into our speakers. We've got Graham Smith, General Secretary of the SUC, to start us off. Thank you. Comrades and friends, it's fantastic to see so many of you here. It's very rare that we get uh, standing room only in this room, but it's fantastic to see so many people here. And I'm absolutely uh, delighted to welcome you, but also in particular to welcome Rene Harado and Ambassador Teresita to the SDUC headquarters for what Vicky rightly said uh, is an, an, an historic event. Um, there was, of course, some doubt as to whether or not uh, the tour was going to go ahead. We found out last week that Rene and Gerardo were having some visa problems with the UK uh, Home Office headed up until today, of course, by the then Home Secretary and now our new Prime Minister, <laughs> Theresa May, of course. Uh, Mrs May has grievous in relation to the Miami Five and Rene in particular. It was she that refused Rene a visa to enter the UK in 2014. Uh, and to prevent him participating in person in the landmark inquiry into the miscarriage of justice perpetrated by the US government against our Cuban comrades. Uh, for our government, for the UK government, 16 years imprisonment wasn't enough punishment. It uh, had to perpe pe perpetuate its own injustice, which of course uh, was something that trade unionists uh, highlighted at the time and whenever such disgraceful behaviour occurs in the future and it surely will, uh, we have a duty to continue to expose it and of course uh, fight against it. Uh, the US stranglehold in Cuba has been one of the most contemptuous and malicious uh, of America's many uh, foreign policy catastrophes in the post-war era and there have been many of them undertaken at the behest of multinational capital. It took until December 2014 for the US to loosen its 54-year-old blockade of Cuba, an aggressive act in itself, uh, and to restore uh, diplomatic relations with the country. And throughout those years, we saw systematic injustice and attacks uh, on, uh, by the US on Cuba, targeted at Cuban leaders and the Cuban people. Uh, acts designed not only to undermine, indeed overthrow, the Cuban Revolution, but as a warning to discourage progressive forces from across Central and Latin America from following a socialist programme. And it's to the credit of the Cuban people, it's to the credit of progressive forces across the region that they didn't buckle in the face of US threats and aggression, but continued to struggle and fight for liberation and to fight for self-determination. And one of the greatest symbols of US injustice and imperialism was the cause of the was the case of the Miami Five. They were comrades who went from Cuba to the US not to commit crimes, uh, but to prevent them. Uh, they went to prevent acts of terror that were being <coughs> perpetrated against the Cuban people. Over, over a course of 40 years, over three and a half thousand Cubans have been killed as a result of violence. Violence often committed uh, with the knowledge and full support of the US intelligence agencies. And it's a sign of the contempt that the US government and the multinational corporations they represent have for the concepts of justice and peace and their utter disregard for the lives of Cubans that they chose not to prevent acts of terror, but to support them. And when Cuba took action to prevent the killing of its own citizens, to save the lives and to disrupt terrorism, the US response was to arrest those comrades uh, and imprison them for two decades. The case of the Miami Five was a gross miscarriage of justice, one which rightly shocked trade unionists and progressive forces and campaigners uh, around the world. And I want to pay tribute to those trade unionists here in Scotland for the important role they played in the campaign for the release of the Miami Five, for the tireless campaigning that was undertaken to expose the injustice perpetrated by the US government. That, that campaign not only focused on securing the freedom of the five and obtaining justice for them and for their families, it highlighted the grotesque and barbaric sanctions that were imposed on Cuba uh, by the US. A sanctioned regime that was not only a, an attack on Cuba, but an attack on socialist principles and values. And it demonstrated the lengths 
that big business and their political puppets will go to protect and further the interests of their class and to demonise and seek to destroy any who threaten it. And while relations between Cuba and the US have improved, there's no room for complacency. Who knows what a Clinton presidency or, God forbid, a Trump presidency might bring. In the and as the, U as the UK government shifts its focus from its attachment to Europe to the US in the wake of Brexit, and it's important that we continue to show solidarity with Cuba and with progressive governments around the world, including those currently under threat from US imperialism. <coughs> Unions have been at the forefront of campaigns which support and give voice to people and progressive movements around the world, including, of course, in South and Central America. And that's had real and tangible effect. The freedom of the Miami Five shows the value of international solidarity and the success that we can have and the need for us to keep on fighting, to keep on campaigning and to keep on demonstrating that solidarity. Despite the change in US policy and the visit of President Obama to Havana earlier this year, and as a baseball fan I was delighted to see my team, the, the Tampa Bay Rays, beat the Cuban national team, but maybe I shouldn't have mentioned that, uh, there is still much to do to recognise the legitimacy of left-wing governments across the world uh, and the different vision they present for the future of working people. And I'm delighted that tonight we can continue to demonstrate our support and solidarity with Cuba and continue to tell the story of the Miami Five. It's a story that not only shows the power of international solidarity, but one that can inspire a new generation uh, into activism. So once again, René Haravdo, a warm welcome to the STUC from your comrades and friends in the trade union movement here in Scotland. Our guests. So, Denise, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Vicky. Um, tonight you're going to hear some fantastic speeches from our comrades, uh, René and Haravdo, um, on the importance of their struggle over many years they were unjustly imprisoned while trying to stop terrorist attacks against the Cuban people. For more than 40 years, right-wing Cuban exile groups based in Miami have killed thousands of people in attacks against Cuba. The US government repeatedly failed to act against the perpetrators of such crimes, including the blowing up of a Cuban airliner in 1976, killing 78 people and bombing campaign against Cuban tourist hotels in the 90s. <coughs> to save lives, Cuba sent five men to Miami. Gerardo Hernandez, Ramon Labanino, Antonio Herrero, <coughs> Fernando Gonzalez, and Rene Gonzalez. Heroes. They sent them there to infiltrate and monitor these groups. At the request of the US government, this information was passed to the FBI in 1998. But instead of arresting the terrorists, the FBI used information to identify the five anti-terrorists who were arrested and charged with spying on September 12, 1998. Their harsh sentences and denial of family visitation rights in prison have been internationally condemned by legal and human rights groups, including Amnesty International. <coughs> And how wonderful, comrades, that we are now honoured with our presence tonight, where many years of campaigning for their freedom from our movement has finally paid off. And it's that solidarity with Cuba that I wanted to touch on briefly, and the importance of the trade union movement play in making vital links through visits and study tours. In 2008, I was part of our Fire Brigade Union study tour delegation to Cuba for May Day. It was the FBU on this tour that politicised me and made me aware of how much a progressive country Cuba is, especially when it comes to health and education. On the outside looking in, you would assume Cuba is stuck in a time warp, marked with decaying buildings and vintage cars. But look a little deeper and you will see advances that would make you wish you were Cuban yourself. Cuba is far more progressive when it comes to social issues than many people realise. During that tour, we had arranged to meet Reps Mariano Castro 
and Alberto Rock for the National Centre for Sex Education. Serisex is a government funded organisation that campaigns for LGBT rights and is at the forefront on AIDS prevention and education. This meeting was the start of the establishment of links with the centre and the FBU involvement and understanding the progression of LGBT work and activism within Cuba. The work of Marella and Alberto has continued to assist the progression of those rights within Cuban society. A series of human rights education events have been developed that provides the knowledge and experience required to challenge discrimination and societal views in a positive manner. In recent years, Cuba's LGBT community has made tremendous strides in terms of visibility, awareness and acceptance. Cuba celebrates International Day Against Homophobia. It's a two-week event that includes lectures, films, arts events, and I'm proud that the FPU are continuing to support that. The FPU refunded visits of Alberto Rock and Mariela Castro to attend TEC LGBT conference in London Pride, where Mariela spoke about the main advances Cuba was making for LGBT rights. It was important for, for Mariela to disperse the myth of how bad Cuba was being portrayed in the mainstream media, and her speech was well received. <coughs> Dr. Alberto Rock then attended the FBU LGBT school and address students on how the work of CNX was impacting on the lives of those Cubans who identify as LGBT. As Cuba continues its journey to garner equality for all self citizens, Mariela and the others involved in the cause know it will take more time, but are happy to continue the necessary work of breaking down barriers. And I want to send a clear message that wherever there will be, they'll have the showing and support of the FBU. And can I just finish off, comrades, uh, by recognising the solidarity and brave and principled position by former FBU General <coughs> Secretary Ken Cameron, who recently passed away. Ken was a wonderful friend to the working people of Cuba. As FBU General Secretary, he was part of the long and proud tradition of international <coughs> solidarity shown towards the Cuban people. In the early days of Cuba's solidarity campaign, it was much more difficult to be seen to support Cuba. A number of key individuals made clear their support for the Cuban people and for the Cuban trade unions in the face of international campaign trying to demonise the island. This support was crucial. It opened the door for the development of the successful solidarity movement within the UK, which has seen our trade unions at the forefront of the campaigns against the blockade and for freedom for the Mami I-5. And Ken Cameron was one of those key individuals. I want to thank Cuba Solidarity Campaign on behalf of the Fire Brigade Union and for Nula Cameron, Ken's wife, for their kind words on Ken's passing. And the best tribute we can give is to once again struggle for an end to the US blockade and for Cuba's right to follow their own chosen path, to continue to build their socialist society built on the principle of human cooperation and solidarity, principles for which Ken Cameron worked for all his life. Viva Cuba. Um, can I introduce Sam McCartney, who is the chair of Unison's Sco Scottish International Committee. Whoa. <laughs> <coughs> um, Ambassador Cameron, uh, on behalf of Guinness in Scotland, I would like to take this opportunity of welcoming you to Scotland. Um, it's probably unusual, basically, that you have got an Irishman who's the chair of the Scottish International Committee. But again, basically, I would say quite clearly, uh, on the basis of the song we had previously and the work that you guys have been doing over the years, uh, it's well felt. Uh, I, you know, um, Guinness have supported. Uh, Cuban, the Cuban Revolution and its people for many years. We have seen many failed attempts by the US and its allies to destroy Cuba. The US has subjected Cuba and its people for years to embargoes and interference. I congratulate the Cuban people for their courage and resilience in preventing this continued attempt to undermine the Cuban people's rights. 
Our Cuban comrades have faced many trials and hardships since they were illegally arrested in 1998. Their families have been subjected to treatment not seen in so-called civilized society for many years. This is American justice. What justice? Our Cuban comrades are a shining light for all people who wish to have a socialist way of life and the beacon of hope for all countries who wish to avoid the continued attempts of the right wing capitalists to subject the working peoples to their neoliberal policies and positions. Rennie and Geraldo, you are very welcome. We salute you and your comrades for all you have done, the many hardships you have faced, the, the things that your families had to cope with and the courageous endeavour your families have shown during this long ordeal. <coughs> Unison continues and will continue to support the Cuban Revolution and its people with all our resources and will. Many examples shown by the Cuban people in health, social care, workers' rights, is endless. I can put this down at this point in time because I don't need to follow the script. The scenario basically is the work that you continue to do, the, the work you do in health, the work that you've done in Pakistan and in other countries that have subjected basically to policies literally covered by the Americans, the withholding of information, the withholding of goods. Our comrades in Nicaragua and Colombia are facing the same scenario now, and I congratulate you for your input basically in terms of uh, the Colombian scenario, and uh, colleagues of mine are in, in, in Havana uh, at, at, as we speak, actually doing some work around trying to resolve that. But again, it is a concerted right-wing attack that we see across the world. Countries basically with elected presidents, countries with elected left-wing uh, groups basically must be supported by the trade unions across the board. They're continuously under attack and we see this periodically, day by day. In France, we are seeing kids and rights and civil rights being endeavoured to be taken away. And all of this is coming from a certain scenario. And when we see effectively what's happening in America at the moment, it is an example, an example of how they treat their own people, not just people of the world. So again, it is more important to hear you guys speak tonight, and I congratulate you again. And on behalf of Unison, and Unison Scotland, we will continue to support Cuba with every bone in our body. So what I would say is it's more important that we hear what you have to say tonight, and that you can update us, and also your comrades also. So viva the revolution. Viva the revolution. speaker from this table is Neil Finlay, who was recently re-elected as a member of the Scottish <coughs> Parliament. It's not always easy if you're a socialist in the Labour Party at this moment in time. Um, and uh, very helpfully to us is the vice convener of the cross-party group on Cuba. Again, not an easy task when you have a particular mix of parties. I think there was a challenge getting them to sign up to restore the cross-party group. We're so glad that it has been restored because we thought of it as a very, very powerful opportunity for us to raise the issues on Cuba. Thank you. Um, it, is a, it is an honour to be here and to welcome uh, Rene and Gerardo to, to Scotland. Uh, like me, I had the honour of uh, hearing them at Durham on Saturday, an event that was absolutely sensational event, uh, the greatest expression of working class culture anywhere in the UK. If you have not been to the Durham Gala, you must go. It is essential on the trade union labour movement calendar. Um, and this year has been a good year for progressive campaigns. I'm going to go off the issue of Cuba for a second, but I, you'll see where I'm going in this. It's been a very good issue for, uh, year for progressive campaigns. At home, home we've seen major victories. The Hillsborough campaign, it, it showed how, despite the media, the police, the justice system, all conspiring to tell lie after lie after lie, about the 96 Liverpool football fans who died at Sheffield. Despite all of that, dogged, determined, dignified campaigning by the families prevailed, and in the end, the truth was exposed. A huge victory, massive victory that should inspire every one of us who are campaigning on issues not to give up. And we saw that with the blacklisting scandal. Construction workers won their case against the biggest names in the construction industry. Workers denied employment opportunities, some for decades, 
because they sought to protect their jobs, protect their terms and conditions, the health and safety and welfare of their workers. And all of that involved a conspiracy involving their employers, the secret services, the police, and sinister organisations working with them. Another victory that should inspire and encourage all of us to demand fairness, justice and equality. And we've still got a huge work to do in this area as we see these companies winning public contracts. The refurbishment of the Glasgow School of Art has been won by one of these companies. A scandal. Yeah. But today, we come here, yes, to welcome Rene and Gerardo to Scotland, but also to celebrate another victory, another great campaign, this time an international campaign. But their plight followed the same formula as the other two I spoke about. Lies reinforced by a concerted media, a propaganda a campaign, the operation, the truth suppressed, dismissed and manipulated, opposition voices ridiculed and portrayed as liars and cranks. But eventually, eventually, that same diligent, dogged campaigning across the world brought truth and justice out and that prevailed and their freedom was secured. And I want all of us to learn from these campaigns, to share and celebrate the victories, but also to use them as a motivation for us to redouble our efforts to go on and win more and more and more. Because too often we get in a spiral of depression and think it's all not going in our favour. Well, we have had victories this year and last. And what we're seeing in the UK, just as we see the world over, uh, but we're seeing in the UK at present, is the political elites do not give up their grip on power willingly. They'll fight with ferocity to keep what they see as their rightful place, where they control our society, they control our political system, and most of all, they control an economic system that delivers resources and wealth and power to keep them at the top, them at the top table, and to keep our class, you and I, where they think we should be subservient to them. And this was the struggle that these men were involved in. They were protecting their country from those involved in terrorist attacks against Cuba. A country which we, as we all know, has faced relentless social, political and economic attacks against its people for having the audacity, the audacity, to create a society <laughs> built upon socialist values. The blockade has imposed choking restrictions on the import and export of foods and minerals and the essential materials needed. Education, uh, healthcare products, medicines, financial services, agricultural goods, machine parts and much, much more affected in one way or another. Hundreds of billions sucked out of the Cuban economy since the, the, the blockade began. And yet, despite that, despite these massive Barriers. We see a country with one of the highest literary rates, literacy rates in the world, 99%. Free education, a right up to higher education. Free school meals and uniforms. The highest ratio of doctors to patients in the world. Life expectancy for a woman of 80 years, 76 for a man. One of the lowest infant mortality rates on the planet. Making huge progress in women's rights, LGBTI rights and the rest of it. And of course, when people over the world are in need, when disasters strike, whether it be a hurricane or an earthquake or an outbreak of illness or whatever, Cuba is one of the first to offer help and medical assistance and solidarity. And it's these beliefs, these principles, these priorities that these men were defending. And it's these beliefs, these principles and these priorities that made them a target for the opponents of the Cuban government. And it's easy for us, it's easy for us here to come along and celebrate this victory. But we have to for never to forget that these people were in jail in a foreign country, victims of a miscarriage of justice for over a decade and a half. Not seeing their wives, no cuddles with their children, no visits to parents, no beers with their pals, no walks in the park or going to the beach. Um, 
None of that. None of the things that we'd all take for granted. Years and years of illegal incarceration. But now freedom. Now freedom. Back amongst family. Back amongst friends. And that freedom is won because people across the world, people like you and I, supported the campaign for the release, putting pressure on governments across the globe to demand that freedom. Here, as always, the trade unions were the backbone of the campaign, as they always are wherever injustice rears its ugly head. And all the time, the Cuba Solidarity campaign helping to coordinate and campaign with our international allies across the globe using every opportunity, whether it be political action, industrial action, uh, through the trade unions, art, music, culture, or whatever. And that activity went right down to a local level, and only exploded over a decade ago. We had Father Jeff Bottoms come to the Miners Welfare Club in Abbeywell and speak about the plight of the Miami Five. We signed postcards, we signed petitions, we shared stories on social media, and like you, we did all of that activity, donating cash and keeping up the pressure, and it paid off. I want to at this point pay tribute to my colleague Elaine Smith, MSP, who has kept the cross-party group in Cuba going no matter what, and has refused to let it die, even when we thought we wouldn't be able to get it. So much that she sacrificed for the cause that she even convinced Myrtle Fraser, one of the most right-wing Tories, to sign up to the group just so we could make it happen. I don't know how she managed that, but she did it. Um, and I want to play, of course, special tribute to Gerardo and Renee and their colleagues. Let them and the campaign that secured their release inspire us and drive all of us to win the many other campaigns that we all care about and inspire us to a better world that we all want to see. Start on Sunday in this room where we will be launching the Jeremy for Leader campaign again. <laughs> Four on Sunday, organising to ensure that Jeremy, who's a great friend of Cuba and supported the campaign all the way through, is elected once again Labour leader. And if you're not a member, get joining.